Okay, what was that? I'm back, man. Came back? Yeah. So what was he saying? Yeah, so, long story short, um, I, I've been in the business for about two years now, and I also work with Freemax. I live in Toronto. Um, the first year at Shadow Rob, I did about four deals. Four, five, sorry, five deals. And then last year was about 12 deals. This is my third year going into business. Yeah. Um, most of my leads I've got through random open houses. I pretty much would do open houses for top agents. And then just like that, I, I, like I would probe the people who came in, I would just follow up with them and I'll just keep, um, I'll just keep in touch. And then maybe after like six months or so, they'll probably end up kissing with me. Uh, rather than that, it's been family, friends. I've done cold calling in the past. I feel like I, I haven't really stuck to it long enough to really see the fruits of my labor, right? Like I feel like I've stuck to it maybe, maybe like a month, like maybe like four or five months, and then I would stop for like a month, and then I'd back up for two months, and then I'd be stopped for like another How many month. calls do you make? How many calls do you make when you do a call session? I was trying to aim for a bunch of different calls. Like calls, I, I wanted to aim for like actual contact, not aim for calls, but 250, 270 calls per day. Okay. Okay, cool. So we're going to role play. Okay. So we're going to role play real quick. Okay. I'm an owner. You're calling me. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, is this Rick? Yeah. Hi, this is Lois Fine from Freemax. How are you? I'm doing good. Perfect. I'm seeing a quick call to let you know that I sold the house close by. 36 Madison Street. And we sold this for $100,000 over asking. Have you heard about that? Nope. Okay, so it's a quick call to see if you guys have any questions about the market at all because we did sell for $100,000 over asking. So we're going to see, we do have a lot of active buyers right now in the market who want to buy in this specific pocket. Um, have you guys thought about selling at all? Nope. Okay, do you guys have any questions about the market that I can help you out with? Nope. Okay, no problem. Thanks for your time, and then I just end up there. I got you, I got you. Um, I like how I... Pretty basic, pretty standard, probably the same thing all the other agents are saying, you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing all the other agents are saying. Okay, so here's the thing. Your intentions when you make those calls are great because you, you're a great realtor. You care about them. You, you want the best for them. You're going to do anything you can to help them, right? Right? Yeah. Okay, so, but the way you're communicating, it doesn't sound like that. It's that you sound like every other realtor. You sound like... You're just trying to get a listing. See what I'm saying? And so what you have to do is line up how you actually feel and who you actually are as a person with how you're communicating to sellers or owners who could buy or sell, right? That's the skill. How many calls do you make in a day? I used to do 100 a day. That was with no dialer. I had to dial all the numbers. By the time dollars came around, I didn't really make too many calls. I was already, you know, selling so much property from all the calls I made earlier in my career. I made over 100,000 calls. And have you built your business based off these cold calls only? That's it. Voice-to-voice -voice contact, man, is the reason why technology is never going to replace real estate agents. There has to be voice-to-voice -voice contact. Do you call seven days a week? I used to, yeah. I don't, I don't hardly make calls anymore. I don't have time. I'm too busy closing deals. See, I built my database so big of people that will call me when they get ready. Now people are just calling me left and right, you know, and I'm just constantly closing deals. You know, and getting referrals and showing property and meeting with clients, you know, it's just, I don't have that much, I don't really have a lot of time to make calls anymore. 
you know, because I'm so busy selling stuff. Yeah. You know, so that that's where you want to be. See, there's different stages of of a real estate career. You know, you're in your build you're in your building stage. So when you're in your building stage of building your database of property owners who know you, like you, trust you, you have to just make a hundred thousand calls or whatever. You know, make make calls till you're so busy you don't have time to make calls. You know, if you have if you if you have a spare moment, then you need to be making calls. If you're so busy you can't make calls, then that's a good thing. You know, but the problem most people have is they confuse being busy with what actually makes money. To me, when I say being busy, I'm talking about showing property, writing contracts, negotiating deals, seeing how much properties are worth, following up with people who want to buy and sell. You know, that's that's money. Yeah. Based on these callings, if you like back when you hit me calls in the beginning, would you take these off or would you feel like I'll bring you off after your point to keep calling every single day, non stop? What say again? Like calling every day, right? Would you take a day off every like two weeks or something just to kind of recharge or would you just go at it every day? Well, I never I never really could make calls seven days a week. Because once you make calls for like two or three days straight, you're really you're really kind of busy for a second handling all those people that you call that want to buy and sell stuff. Yeah. If you approach it right, see you're not busy because you're not you don't have the right phone script. You're not approaching people like they're humans. You're approaching them like they're a number. You see what I'm saying? And your your intentions are good. Your intentions are good, but your intentions don't line up with how you're communicating with people. So you're not getting the results you need. See when you when you quit worrying about the deal and you start trying to actually see how you can really help people, that's when everything changes for you. And business will just start flowing. You have to take the leap of faith from high pressure to low pressure. And what I like to tell people to do is to go go 50-50. You know, keep doing what you're doing on half of your calls and be high pressure and ask them if they want to sell and all that stuff. And on the other half of the calls, do it my way, do it low pressure. You know, and after about two weeks of that, you're going to switch all the way over to low pressure because you're going to start getting deals from it. Because people are going to start recognizing you as a person, not a salesman. They don't want to deal with a salesperson. They want to deal with a real human, somebody that can relate to them, somebody who wants to help them, somebody who wants to listen, not somebody who's just trying to get another deal. The, 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 the realtors that just want deals are a dime a dozen. There's one on every corner. The realtor that actually cares about their clients, I mean, everybody cares, but the one that actually communicates that they care correctly and shows the client that they care the right way, those are rare. You're not going after the listing. You're not going after the appointment. You're going after that relationship. You're going after that email address. You're going after longevity. Build your database. That This is how you become number one in your area in five years. You know, keep doing it the way you're doing it. You're going to keep making whatever you made. You're probably just going to continue and kind of plateau out at some point and just kind of, you'll never really hit the big time where you double your income and triple your income because of this mindset I'm telling you. It's not smoke and mirrors, dude. I'm trying. I'm actually trying to help you right now. I actually want you to succeed big time. So just take a little bit of what I told you, mix it up with what you already got going on, test stuff out, try new things, and make something happen. Figure figure it out. 100%. Thanks, buddy. Do you feel like that may not want a person to work with me because I didn't keep in touch, I just sent email? No, you're going to lose some of them. You can't win them all, dude. Well, at some point, it has to be about quantity. At some point, you got to put a, a lot of deals together. You know, you can't you can't milk every single client. You can't call every single client. You have to let the process do its thing and filter out the people who like your style. 
My style is quantity. And if I get somebody in front of me, then they're number one. I'm going to spend all my time with the people that are in front of me, you know, that are buying stuff and selling stuff. I'm showing property. They get 100% of me when I'm in front of them. But outside of that, I can't call all my clients back and see how they're doing. I'm too busy. So I have to let this email do it, do the thing. I have to let this email be the thing that keeps us connected. Why would I do that? Why would I do that? Huh? What? What? Work hard, take time off. Three weeks? Yeah, there are some people that take that long off. More power to them, dude. I'm trying to build a dynasty. I don't care what other people do. I'm not taking three weeks off. I might take a week off, maybe. But uh, I have a really good assistant, and my dad's in real estate too. And so yeah. I can give whatever, I can handle whatever I need to from wherever. I'm fixing to be traveling around. I'm fixing to be traveling around speaking. I'm fixing to be traveling around speaking all over the country. Over the next, uh, this year and next year and the year after, I'm going to be all over the place. And biz the business is going to run just fine without me. How old are you when you started real estate? 20 years old. How old are you now? 36. Oh, so you've been in business for like 16 years now? Yeah. Went Monday, I went to the Alabama Remax Awards Banquet in Birmingham. Number freaking one in the state, dude. Wow, good for you, man. Number one in the state, transactions and volume. So, that, so the only form of prospecting is cold calling only, or do you have different forms of prospecting too? That's it. That's it. You call them daytime normally? From 9 to 12, because that's when my mind is the sharpest. Okay. That's when I call too, right? Yeah, 9 and 12. That's when my mind's the sharpest, you know, in the morning. After lunch, your mind starts to get fatigued a little. Yeah. You want to be as sharp as you can when you make your calls. No doubt, man. Be good. Thank you, man. Later. He won't do anything, will he? No, I, I told him he wouldn't. I was like, you're not going to do it. I already know this. But I really don't care if people do or not right yeah. now. I really don't. I'm getting about one sign up a day right now, one or two. Okay, so we have to make this thing where it's the due diligence starts today, not the way they wrote it up. Mm-hmm. And how they did it, it's weird. Can you just email her back and say, okay, and just ask her how she wants us to do that? Yeah, because they countered addendum A, which we would sign and then we countered our addendum. They should have just signed it and then accept it, but they came back in and put another counter. You know what I mean? Like here, they should have just, they're doing it, they did it backwards. Can Fern be shown Saturday at 11? Mm-hmm. Okay.